was separated. Th and that's something that God had me learn. Because I'm a family-oriented type of person. I take a lot of pride and stock in my, my, my blood family. Even the ones that's flat-out heathens that I don't really care much for. I don't want their souls to be lost for eternity. But I realized when I realized God was going to use me to help them come to him, I knew I couldn't do I couldn't hang with them. I couldn't do stuff with them. First of all, I was seeing too much. And when you see a lot of sin going on, a lot of things going on, one or two things going to happen. You're either going to compromise or you're going to get convicted and want to separate from that. People who see sin going on, drinking, smoking, partying, adultery, homosexual, when you with when you hang around people who live like that, you will become that. I would never do that. You're already doing it. Because the, there were, for example, I, I have a loved one in my, my, my family, immediate family, who called himself being homosexual. This was their choice. I've known them all their life. And they decided to marry the same sex. There were certain people who called themselves believers that was in my family who went to support that wedding. How could you support something that's so anti-Christ? You know how? Because they're being blackmailed by the enemy to where that person is making them think they don't love them because they're not doing their sin. Because you don't compromise and come and do come and support my sin, that means you don't love me. That's that's exactly not what it means. If I came and supported your wrongdoing, according to the Bible, I'm helping kill you. I re I refuse to be a co-conspirator in helping you go to hell for eternity. See, Christians, we have to understand why we are called Christians in the first place. We spoke on earlier how light and darkness have, have no fellowship. Let me finish this scripture. Second, the last point is fearless. And you have to be fearless to where you can't worry about what people are going to think about you when you choose not to do what they do. For God have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Verse 8. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to what? The power of God. The afflictions of the power of God. And for some people, the affliction will just simply be, you have to separate yourself. And you have to endure people talking about you like something's wrong with you because you don't want to hang with them in their wrongdoing. I don't know who the Holy Spirit is talking to who's going to see this, but you need to, Lord have mercy, you need to repent. I'm going to get on that in a minute here. Let me read 9 and 10. Who have saved us and called us with a holy calling. Holy means separate. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Verse 10. But it's now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who have abolished death and have brought life and immor immoral immorality to light through the gospel. We were all immoral acting people before Jesus Christ revealed to us how bad of a sinner we was. We was all immoral in one way or another. In the summation of everything I just shared to you on how to access the power of how to access your power, people need to repent. And when I mean, when I say repent, that means don't go back doing the same things you repented for. You ever heard somebody apologize to you and do the very thing they apologize for quickly? Well, that's what we do to God. We'll repent and then we'll, we'll, we'll get a phone call and fail the test. Didn't God, didn't you just repent? excuse me, for doing something and then here come the test real quick to see if your repentance was sincere or not. There's a lot of things that's going to continue to go on this in this calendar year. I've been sharing with people how this is a Shemitah year. It was a year where they were told not to touch the land, not to plow, not to crop, not to touch it. And they had to put their faith in our, our, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ and completely and ultimately depend on him. You know, people can't even stay away from stuff for a season. They can't. If God is trying to save your family, your co-workers, we all have circles. I, I used to do this in Bible study when I do, we, we didn't do, but we had a Bible school at our church 
Oracle's of God School. And this is one of the things I used to do with people. I used to have them grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, and put a dot. And make a small circle around the dot, make another circle around that circle, make another circle around that circle. That, that's your circle of influence. You're the dot. And the, the circle is your the people you're around every day, the people you're around at your jobs, the people you that see you every once in a while, your neighbors. You have influence on all these people based off of how they see you according to your faith. And and, and when, when God gave me that illustration, that made me conscious of my choices and the things I do. Because if I'm an ambassador for Jesus Christ, I can't come in, out my house with no shirt on because women may look on me and lust on me and I don't want to cause them to fall. You know, I became conscious of little things and great things. And that's what I hear the Holy Spirit speaking to somebody. You need to start taking like, accountability for the power that God has granted you by knowing Him. He's given all of us believers an opportunity to know Him in a pardon of our sins. That's why I love the altar call. Altar call is one of my favorite parts of the services because that's when broken and contrite, contrite, contrite people come to God. And you, you really know who the Holy Spirit is talking to when people will just lift up their hands and submit to come into an altar and, and bow themselves before God. But now here's the test. That, that part, okay, that you're broken, you're contrite. Here's the test. When you get up from there and God has washed you clean and gave you another opportunity, what are you going back to? You do not return back to, the Bible talks about a dog returning to his vomit. That is so nasty. And we've, I've seen dogs do that, up chuck and then eat it. That's just nasty to me. It turns me off to where I can't even eat for a while. But that's what he says, that's, that's the example he gave us in the Bible. That's what you're doing when you compromise. When God clean you up, give you power, and then you go back into those beggarly elements. Because you're in conversation, let me hear, I hear that, this is so vivid to me right now, I don't know who the Holy Spirit is talking to. So, you're in conversation with sinners or people who need Jesus about things that ain't got nothing to do about Jesus. You have to compromise to go around them folks and you know it. Because you can't talk about your Lord because they don't want to hear it. Because you're on their terms, they're not on yours. And people sometimes look at me like, well that's why you don't go nowhere, you don't do nothing. You're right. Unless, the, unless my steps are ordered by God, I'm not moving. I'm not trying to lose my power to intercede and pray for my family and, and my loved ones. And, and, and this may seem, seem arrogant, but read Ephesians chapter 4. We are gifts. We are gifts to the body of Jesus Christ and to the, to the world. God gave us as gifts when you accept your calling. Because he's using us to win them to him so they can come and, and be saved. And, li and live their best life. You know, you can't help answer nobody's prayers and help intercede for people when you're with them and you're doing it. Be in a car with, with somebody and they're driving and get pulled over and they're, they're doing something illegal. They have some legal stuff in the car and, and see how good that, that you in court, you're going gonna to go through the same stuff they're going through. You may get a little grace and mercy because of Jesus Christ, but for the most part, because he says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. But for the most part, and that's where I hear the Holy Spirit saying with some people. So how to access your power. You believe, you have faith. And you're fearless. That's the times we're living in right now. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you in the name of Jesus Christ. For what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard, Lord Jesus. Psalms 107.20 says, You sent your word and you healed us from our destructions. Humanity has a problem with destroying ourselves. We have, a, we have an issue with destroying ourselves, Father God. We don't do the things that we're supposed to do. And Psalms 136 talks about, and your mercy endure forever. Thank God for Jesus that your mercy endures forever. And you said you would never leave us, nor will you forsake us. But we don't use those scriptures as texts, as, as an excuse to do wrong. We don't. We listen, we pray, and we obey. We do what your word say do. We do what the Spirit leads us to do. We do not do what our flesh desires. I thank you for this platform. This may not be the comfortable place where I'm used to preaching and teaching from. The lighting may not be right, but the word went forth. And your Bible tells us, the word tells us, Father God, your word will not return unto you void. 
Meaning it's not going to be canceled. It has a purpose, a reason, and a season. And you're, 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 you're ready to perform your word through us. So that we can, you can glorify us and we can tell people it's because of you, Lord Jesus, that, we're, that you're using us. That we have what we have, that we're doing what we're doing. I pray, Father God, for those who are struggling with little foxes. I can see, Father God, you've allowed me to see in the spirit how little foxes are destroying people's lives. Because they think, oh, it's little, it's not a big deal. It's a major deal. It's a major deal. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Little foxes, it's little things. Yeah, big things are bad too, but you got to work up to big things. They start, every big thing started as a little thing. So I rebuke and bind the compromiser right now in the name of Jesus. Have your will and your way, Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah, amen. May God bless you and heaven's face continually and always smile upon you.